get an understanding, right? The most powerful thing you can do is to get around successful people, right? Um, To be successful. The most powerful thing you can do with your life is to get around successful people and be successful. So let, let me allow Jim Rohn to explain, right? Let me allow Jim Rohn to explain it. This biblical concept in a non explain it in a very practical, um, non-biblical way. Become a good reader. Now that's my opinion. Listen to the other lecturers and listen to me and make up your own mind. Don't be a follower. Be a student. Okay? I say, really, for life change, you got to read. One way to learn is from your own experiences. But another way to learn is from other people's experiences. See, one book might save you five years if you read it. Did you know there's books on how to be stronger, more decisive, be a speaker, be a leader, have a better effect on other people, develop your personality. Did you know there's books on that? And people don't read them. How would you explain that? And they can read. Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and they wrote down how they did it and people don't read it? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. You know, you get tied up. The guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work. By the time you struggle home, it's late. You got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night reading, 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 reading. And the guy's behind on his car payment. Good worker, hard worker. Sincere, but you got to be better than sincere and work hard. Otherwise, at the end of your life, you'll wind up cold, stony broke. You got to be better than a good worker. Let's pause right there. He says you have to be better than a good worker. Sincere, hard worker. But at the end of your life, right? You're that broke or you'll end up broke rather. So that's one point. But this, let's continue to listen on as he gives the revelation of Luke 6 and 38. Of give and it shall be given unto you. And good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men pour or give into your lap. So let's, I'm going to hit play and we're going to continue to listen on. You've got got to be be a good reader. Get around successful people and listen. Now, you can also learn from unsuccessful people. Take notes on both, negative and positive. On the negative, the notes are called what not to do. And you got to learn what not to do as well as what to do. So learn from the negative as well as the positive. Okay, find out what poor people read and don't read it. That's good information. Learn from the negative. But now you can also learn from the positive. Get around successful people. Listen to what they say. Listen to how they say it. It's important. We've all got about 16 waking hours. Practice listening those 16 hours. And I say practice listening because listening isn't easy. I found out it's easier to talk than it is to listen. But if you will practice listening the 16 hours you're awake, sure enough, from surprising sources comes great ideas. In sales training, we teach, if you want to learn sales, listen to the kids. Kids have got to be the master salespeople of all time. They have no equal. Father tells his young son, no, you cannot have an ice cream cone. 30 minutes later, he's licking on one. 
That'd be 30 minutes worth listening to. They got moves you wouldn't believe. Persistence runs deep like the ocean. And the kids never took a class on how to overcome objections. They already know how. They don't need classes. You tell kids no. That goes right on by. They give you three good reasons. Just say no. It goes right on by. They give you three more. They're masters. So listen and learn. Now, here's some of the best advice I've got for the whole evening. It won't get any better than this. This is it. Poor people ought to take rich people out to dinner and listen. I want to pause right there. Did he say that a poor person should take a person that has more out to dinner? Did he say that a person who has nothing should take, should take, not go with, but should take, should invest in a rich person meal. And I'm going to let him explain the rest of it. To some people, that makes absolutely no sense. Logically, it makes no sense. Why would I, struggling financially, invest in someone more successful than me? Why would I give to someone when I'm the one who I feel like need to be given to? Why would I barely making it take somebody who is more successful than me to dinner to invest in their product, their knowledge, their wisdom, their information? Why? I'm the one struggling. May I submit to you that maybe that's why you're struggling? Someone said on my previous live stream that prosperity is a mindset. Yes, it is. Because you don't know why you are struggling financially. And sometimes you don't want to know. Because you have a closed hand and you have a closed mind. Right? So let, let me finish playing this before I, I, I continue to... Um, Spill, because he gave a deep revelation on this, right? A deep revelation. That's some of the best I got. <laughs> if a guy's not doing well, one of the first things he ought to do is find a guy that is doing well and offer to buy him his dinner. Spend 50, 60, 80, 100 dollars. Go for the full nine course. Start him on the juices and hors d'oeuvres. Get him started talking. The salad takes. That's some of the best I got. If a guy's not doing well, one of the first things he ought to do is find a guy that is doing well. Let's pause right there again. If a person is not doing well, the very first thing they should do is invest in someone who is doing well. Then he says, spend 50, 60, $100, not the rich person but the person that's struggling financially. Okay, let me let Jim Rome explain it. And offer to buy him his dinner. Spend 50, 60, 80, 100 dollars. Go for the full nine course. Start him on the juices and hors d'oeuvres. Get him started talking. The salad takes 15 minutes. Keep it rolling. Biggest steak in town takes 45. Keep it rolling. Pour on the dessert. Stretch that meal out about two hours. If you get a successful person to eat and talk for two hours, they're liable to drop ideas in your lap, change your life. Multiply your income by two, by three, by five.
I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm muted. So I unmuted. Thank you. Thank you. So he said, when you give to a successful person and they drop ideas, it could be knowledge, information, into your lap. That's all Luke 6 and 38. Give and it shall be given. It does not say the reversal that you get first, right? Without giving first. It says to give and it shall be given unto you. So as Jim Rome explained it, when you invest in a person who's giving you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in your lap, whether you spend 50, 60, 80, or $100, and you have to understand, this Jim Rohn, this was not like today. He broke it down even more. He said, first, give him a salad. Right? He said, salad, the prep for a salad takes about 15 minutes. Right. Jerome also said money isn't everything, but it ranks pretty high with oxygen. Right. He said it ranks pretty high up there with, with oxygen. He also said profits, P-R-I-F-I-T. I can also say profits, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S in the Bible. It's better than wages. See, at some point, as he discussed earlier on, you have to get in a system where you're not trading time for money. I, I uploaded a video by 50 Cent, right? 50 Cent said it this way. That when he uh, killed himself off of his show, right, People ask him, man, why you kill yourself off your own show? Because 50 said when he was doing the acting and ghosts, right? When he, I mean, uh, what's the night? Power. When he was doing the acting, every he had to do something to make money every time. But he said when he killed himself off his own show, Power, now he make no he, he makes money without doing work. Back to Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn, let me let me look up um, because this was back, I think, in the nineties, in which he gave this revelation, right? When he gave this revelation, he said, "Then fifty, sixty, eighty, a hundred dollars," because he died in two thousand and nine. Right. So let's just say this was the 90s, early 2000s. So imagine how much a hundred dollar meals would work if you can find a rich person. To buy their time so they can drop ideas in your lap. Jim Rome said the secret to success is. That you give and then you shall be given and give to people who are more successful than you. He also brought out. Yeah, you can learn from negative people or negative experiences. But what you should learn from those people is what not to do. What you should learn from people who are not as successful as you is what habits do they practice every day and what do you not want to do as a result of it? Do they make earned income where they have to perform the work Every single time, are they able to schedule their hours that they work? Are they able to say, hey, um, look, this is my work schedule, my work hours, right, this week? Or do they have someone that makes their work schedule? See, as Jim Rohn brought out, the problem with most people struggling financially is they're always looking to get before they give. Mm -hmm. And their mind is absurd. It's insane to give to somebody that has more 
me spending a hundred dollars on a rich person meal they have it's a reason why they have it look i just ordered this book on amazon you will not find a a billionaire or a millionaire who do not tithe you won't find it i just ordered this book on amazon i can't wait to read it right now, let me share this with you, if it allow me um, to share this. <clears throat> I can't wait to read this book. Because this is what it brought out. The secret to success. Let me see, will it share this page? Or is it protected? I just purchased this on Amazon. And why wouldn't you want to give to somebody who's doing the research and the reading and the hard, um, all the hard work for you? You know, if you think about the Bible, right, the Bible is based on agriculture, parables, a lot of it, a lot of it. And in the Bible, when it speaks of agriculture terms and giving, one of the things that I learned from my grandparents, right, of that uh, were farmers is that it takes hard work to get the soil ready, right? It takes certain tools. It, it takes a certain tilting of the ground, a certain breaking of the earth, right? Just to get that soil ready for a seed to be planted in and so the seed can grow and produce a bigger harvest. So what you do is take out all the hard work when you invest in someone that's more successful than you. Because they went through the preliminaries of reading and researching and putting in the time and the effort and getting the knowledge. And all you have to do is just drop the seed in. Let's, I call it these, these strategies. You got to have a strategy in life. Right? If you don't know where you're going, you'll end up nowhere. You got to have a strategy. Right. You have to have a system and the Bible gives you so many systems on success. You have to have a system, so many systems on success. And guess what? The symptoms, the systems are simple, but people make them mentally complicated. Right. They want to make them mentally complicated. As Jim Rohn says, you give to rich people or you give to people that are more successful than you. As Stormy Wellington said, money is a principle and it's an honor code. And when you don't tap into the honor code, the money you receive from the wisdom and knowledge and information of a person you're receiving it from become now dishonorable. Right. See, I'm not teaching you a hype and hope message. I don't, I'm not telling you to jump, shout, spit, turn into circles. I'm not telling you to um, worship the moon or worship the sun. I'm telling you about an infinite God and biblical laws of financial, emotional, mental, and health success. So Jim Rohn says, Take a rich person out and you invest in them and they will drop ideals and wisdom in your lap. That's in alignment with Luke 6 and 38. And then um, I ordered this book today. And in this book, let me see if you all can see this. Okay, let me see if I can enlarge it. All right. It says, the richest man of all time when wealth is measured as a percentage of the national economy was John D. Rockefeller. He once said, God gave me my money. I believe the power to make money is a gift from God. It clearly states that God gives you the power to get wealth in order to confirm his government which he swore to your ancestors and, and, and is happening even today. This is Deuteronomy 8 and 18. 
Everyone to whom God has given riches and wealth, along with the power to enjoy it, this is a gift from God, Ecclesiastes 5 and 19. So let's think about John D. Rockefeller. Let's be honest. We all I always talk about on this channel, the rock. Well, we don't always talk about it, but people will bring up the Rothschilds and the Rockefeller. And they will talk about how evil they were, even with money. But did you all know that as evil as John D. Rockefeller was, right? He believed in tithing because it is a biblical concept. Mm -hmm. As much as you all see a tithe, a person that follows biblical principles, no matter how evil they are with the practices of it, they will not be denied prosperity because it is a law. And anyone teaching you against this, they don't have wisdom, knowledge, understanding or revelation against it, about it. They just don't. Anyone telling you otherwise, right? I, I have another um, scripture to back this up. Because God said, you know, I reign on the just as well as the unjust. Anyone that follow the laws of kingdom, prosperity, and giving and receiving are going to reap the rewards. Even John D. Rockefeller said, I believe in tithing. And that's all people want to talk about how evil the Rockefeller and the Rothschilds are. But you, right, you still see what his biblical and his financial principles was. And the reason why money is not coming and flowing to you, because you don't want to give. And you depend on you more than you do the infinite God. John D. Rockefeller says, I never would have been able to tie the first million dollars I ever made if I had not tied my first salary, which was a dollar and fifty cent per week. Now, to all my intellectuals, all my spiritual and religious people, I wish, I pray that you watch this live stream. And also, as Travarius uh, and um, Shara, I have a saying for you all: affirmation is just a dec declaration of truth. After you follow actions. And I want you all to say this out loud in agreement with me. Since giving is the first step in receiving, my giving makes me rich. That's simple. It's simple. It's simple. I know every live stream, I may have a different affirmation to say for you. Since giving is the first step in receiving, my giving makes me rich. That's, that's, that's what I want y'all to say. That's what I want you to say, Travarius and Shara. Another scripture I'm going to show you, and then we're going to look at the uh, Social Security benefits. That's my second subtopic. If you don't think evil people still, right, God still has the honor principles. Alexander, this is 2 Timothy 4, 1, 4. The metal worker did a great deal of harm. But it says the Lord will repay him, but he's, in other words, for what he's done, but another translation says he did a great deal of evil, right? The Lord, but the Lord still rewarded him according to his works. God's principle cannot and will not be hindered or delayed. You reap what you sow, people. It is just that simple. Good, bad, or indifferent. You reap what you sow. What do I mean by indifferent? It means you give nothing, 
You sow nothing, you get nothing. You do bad, you reap bad. You do good, you reap good. You give money, you get more money. God never gives you back what you gave, ever. That's not his, that's not his mode of operation. That's what the kingdom of heaven is called. So if you ever wonder why someone is struggling financially because they never give financially, it's just that simple. Whenever one, anyone comes to me saying I'm struggling financially, they are not, they don't release financially ever. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't tie. They don't, they don't. Right. So let's get into the second part of this. Tavarius, that's you and Shiras. Since giving is my first step in receiving, my giving makes me rich. I touch and agree with you on that. Right. That what is your will reach you by divine right, by the infinite God, infinite spirit who has infinite love and infinite power and avalanches of abundance with good of all that's concerned. Right. Now, let's talk about this debt ceiling. Let's talk about the debt ceiling. I just I was so when I heard Jim Rome say that I had to explain it. 